Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Scenes by Joy. And we have made it to day 14 of Vlogmas. So happy, you guys. But today I want to get into a serious topic. Um, it's something that actually I've been discussing a lot lately with you know, different people. I had the open discussion with my students. I had the discussion with my boss the other day and it's just something I've been talking about in general. So what I wanna get into today is seasonal depression, what it is and how to overcome it. So for starters, I was discussing seasonal depression in class and I had a student that had no idea what it was. Like she was clueless to what seasonal depression was. She didn't know the cause of it. She didn't know the ins and outs of it. So we kind of had an open discussion about it and I used myself for example. And I just said to myself, why not just make a video about it? Because there's a lot of people who are probably feeling emotions during seasonal changes, but, they're, but they don't know what they are. They're not understanding where they're stem from and i just want to give a little insight i am no expert i am no doctor i am just speaking from my personal experience and what i have learned throughout life so what i describe seasonal depression as is when it's transitioning from one season into the next and you know just you feel depressed you have an overload of anxiety you just feel really down, your mood is off, you're not just your normal self. And I know me personally, I suffer the most when it is transitioning from summertime to fall slash winter. And just a little background story, when I really experienced seasonal depression, it was after my first year of college. And um, it was during my first year of being a teacher. And we went on Thanksgiving break. And I kid you not, you guys, I stayed in the bed for that entire week. I did not want to get up. I was sad. I was crying. I just could not get it together. In my mind, what I was tripping off of is that, okay, I'm in this awkward stage of I'm no longer a child no more. I'm an adult. I have started my career. And is this it? Like, is this just my life? Like, I become a teacher, then I die. I really didn't know what what my main purpose was. Yes, I did go to school to become a teacher, but once I had accomplished that goal, I never thought about what's next. And once I got into that lifestyle, I feel stuck. I feel too routine. I do not do well with routine, you guys. I don't mind, you know, staying consistent, but I'm an artist at heart. I want to be in one particular field, but I want that field to give me different things to do from day to day, new projects, uh, new people to meet, new goals to reach. So that in and out of waking up, going to school, teaching, grading papers, and repeating that cycle, it really took a toll on me mentally. And I didn't think about it as much until I felt that seasonal change. It was gloomy outside, daylight savings, it was darker. I felt like I couldn't do anything. I felt that, oh, it's dark outside, I need to be in the house. And really, I was raised that way. I would party at nighttime as a kid, but my granny was really big on when it's dark outside, you need to be in the house like it's not safe out there. And when you've been trained that way for so long, you associate darkness outside with it's time to get ready for bed. So when it's 5 p.m. and it's pitch black outside, you know, my I'm just shutting down, like, internally. I'm just shutting down. I'm just a big ball of sadness. I'm just a big ball of anxiety. I'm just like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. And I can't because it's dark outside. And I'm just not feeling motivated. And there's no sunlight. And I can't go out. I can't get inspired. It was, y'all, I was an emotional wreck. I was an emotional mess. <laughs> And as I've mentioned before, I'm a Leo, ruled by the sun. 
My moon is cancer, my rising is cancer, which is a water sign, but I associate that with, I love being in the pool, I love being in the beach, I love a jacuzzi, I love a boat ride, things like that. Those are summer activities. Those are summer and spring activities, you guys. When it's sun shining outside, when the sun, you know, doesn't set until about 8.30 p.m., I swear I'm at the best mentally, physically, creatively. I'm just, I feel like I'm a better friend. I feel like I'm a better lover. I feel like I'm a better artist. I just, I thrive in spring and summer. Like, I need it. I love it. I thrive in having like pool days and hanging out with my friends and beach bumming. Like that is me. That's when I'm my happiest. But when that fall and that winter time hit, you guys, like it is tough for me. So that's how I kind of describe and explain seasonal depression. And I know when I was talking to my boss, she's the complete opposite. She told me that she felt comfortable and more calm during the fall and winter when it's transitioning into spring and summer that's when you know her seasonal depression really kicks in and i never met anyone where it was flip-flop like that and so don't think because my seasonal depression starts in fall winter that that's just the blueprint for seasonal depression no it's where you really feel like as the seasons are changing, that you are changing, but not in a positive way, whatever time of the year that is, okay? And us as humans, we are connected to the universe. We are connected to the world. So I get into this spiel, probably later on, I don't know, it may be a little too controversial, which I'm not afraid of controversial topics, but I consider myself real, I consider myself religious and spiritual. So I believe in God, I go to church, I consider myself a Baptist, but I also believe in, you know, us as humans are connected to the universe and manifestation and what we put out will reflect back to us and karma and things of that such. So as I was saying, we are connected to this earth. So when I say seasonal depression, know that as the world changes, as the weather changes, as you know, the leaves turn colors and they fall to the ground, we as humans are changing too. So do not underestimate, you know, God's power. Do not underestimate the control that this big, beautiful world has over us because it has a lot of control over us. But as humans, it is our responsibility to learn how to overcome the negative things that this world can throw at us at times. Which brings me into my next part of this segment is how do we overcome seasonal depression? And I wish I would have used a better word because it's not that you overcome seasonal depression, but you learn to live through seasonal depression because you are going to feel those emotions. You are going to have a bad day. That's just inevitable. You can't escape that, but you have to find a balance to where you're not soaking in that depression, you're not soaking in that anxiety, you're not soaking in those nerves. And what I have learned this year, and yes, you guys, I've been dealing with seasonal depression for a while, and I am just now learning at 29 years old how to live through. So um, what I have learned to do after all this time is that I just really get into loving on myself. And when I mean loving on myself, that means taking the time to figure out what it is that Joyce really like. Because, you know, sometimes we'll just touch and go on things like, oh, I'm kind of interested in this. I'm kind of interested in that. But mm, are you really passionate about it? And I had to realize what I want my true career goal to be. I had to realize what my true hobbies were. I had to really master, you know, balance. I had to really dive deep into joys. And I know one of my issues was, and the reason why I just didn't know myself that deep is because all throughout college, I always had a roommate. I always lived with my best friend, you know? So we are, we're codependent on one another. 
to say. Emotionally codependent. So I'm not thinking about what Joyce really likes or what Joyce is into solo because I'm always with my best friend, if that makes sense. So if I'm having a bad day, we're kind of just like, let's go to the bar, let's go party, let's go out to eat, let's just, you know, like I'm not getting to know myself and I'm not learning those tools that I needed to know, you know, once I was living by myself. Then, once I had started living by myself, I always had a boyfriend. I always had a boyfriend or somebody that I was talking to. And you know, when you first meet a guy or you're dating a guy, you're all wrapped up and caught up in them. So you're really not thinking about what you like outside of him. Like when you're bored and you feeling sad, you just gonna hang out with your boo. You're not really getting to know you. So <laughs> I had to really force myself to where when you're having a bad day, don't run over Brie House, Joyce. Sit down and figure out why you're having a bad day. I had to really say, like, Joyce, you don't need to be in a relationship right now. You don't need to be worried about that right now. You need to figure out what it is that you care about, what you like, what's going to make you happy. So when you get depressed like this, you're not so stagnant. Because when I, when I get depressed, you guys, I get stagnant. I don't care about my camera. I don't care about vlogging. I don't care about teaching. I don't care about nothing. I am the worst of the worst in all aspects of my life. And at my big old age, at 29 with 30 approaching, and with me having aspirations of owning a home, being a mother, being this mass con guru, I cannot afford to have long periods of times like that, you know? It's okay if I feel like that maybe a day or so, but to spend weeks, months feeling like that, it's not okay. It's not okay. So I had to do that inner work, baby. I had to do that inner work and I had to discover what it is that I really like. And what I learned is that working out makes me happy. Although I may nag, groan and complain getting up, once I'm in that gym, I love working out and after I work out, I feel so good. And on days that I can't work out, I feel guilty. I'm just like, okay, I gotta go to the gym. I gotta go to the gym because when, I, when I'm in there, I feel good. When I leave, I feel even better. So I, I had to start incorporating my, work, my workouts. I love cooking. Like, I love food, you guys. The thing is, is that I like being able to come home and knowing that there's a home-cooked meal there. I like trying out new recipes. I used to always cook and I just, I used to always cook and I just got into this bad habit of just eating out all the time, not caring about what I put into my body. And what you put into your body affects your mood as well. So I had to get back into cooking. I, you know, once um, those Instagram reels, when I was putting R&B music over um, those Instagram cooking reels, those had me in choco, you guys. I'm saving recipes. I'm like looking up different things. I was, I got back into that and that made me happy. I had to realize like Joyce, your camera, whether you are recording others, taking pictures of others or simply recording yourself, it makes you happy. Don't let anything steal your joy. Focus on the things that make you happy and the things that make me happy, they make me a better person overall. When you work out, you look good. When you're eating a healthy meal, a home cooked meal, you feel good. And when you're doing something that you're passionate about, it don't even feel like work, like you're so intertwined with it to where you become obsessed. Like the days that I'll be like, okay, I'm not even gonna vlog today, I'm tired. It bothers me. Like if I go to sleep with the mindset that I'm not gonna vlog the next day, it bothers me so bad that my body automatically wakes up at like seven o'clock in the morning and I'm grabbing my camera like, okay, maybe I can do a video over this. And now that I have participated in this challenge and I've been vlogging consistently, my mind is just, okay, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Like, you guys take the time to get to know you and what makes you happy. That way you are filling your time up with those things. And when you're depressed, you are just wasting time. You're not doing anything. All you're doing is just laying there and thinking about the things that's making you depressed. But when you replace those things with things that you actually care about and that you love, you don't even have time to think about being depressed because you're so busy doing the things that you love. So now that I'm working out, I'm eating good, I'm vlogging, and on top of vlogging, I gotta have things to vlog, you guys. Now I'm making time 
to go out with my friends. It used to be like, oh girl, I ain't gonna go out. I'm tired, I can't do this. No, yes, let's go out. Let's go to this pop-up bar. Let's go to um, the movies. Let's go to happy hour. Let's do this and that because I'm gonna have a good time while I'm there. I'm gonna turn up, I'm gonna eat good. And on top of that, I have content to vlog. I don't have time to lay in the bed and be depressed because I'm too busy out here living my best life. That is my spiel over seasonal depression. As y'all can see, like I'm passionate about this topic. Like I'm so passionate about this topic because I know what it feels like to go down that rabbit hole. I know what it feels like to see dark days, y'all. And I don't want that from nobody. I want us to all be happy. And I want us all to know that we gonna be all right. We gonna be all right, y'all. So as always, like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time.